Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Salamat siang uh, to all my Indonesian friends. What a privilege this morning to just sit around the world with you. Good morning, shalom, shalom South Africa. Yes, uh, we awake another day that we can shine with the glory of God. And uh, I really would like to welcome you this morning with our session and uh, I'm really excited, uh, you know, today is the 30th of November, it is the last day of November, then 11 months would have been passed since January, and it leaves us with one month, 31 days. And how many of the things that we set out to do in this year we fulfilled, and how many things passed, of, you know, us by, and how many things we've not yet done in, in completion. So, yeah, we on the 30th of November. Pastor Marius, Goeiemorgen, Doc Marius, you and Doc Anniki, good morning, good morning, hallelujah. A privilege to just be part of Kingdom Disciples Network, part of a team that truly seeking God and the fullness of God. Amen. So yes, good morning South Africa, hallelujah, praise God. We will give a minute or so, but yeah, like I've said, <clears throat> you know, 11 months, what can we expect for December? I mean, January we've set out to do certain things. For many people it was not a good year, it was more valleys than high places, it was more situations than victory. For many, it was a year of trials and tribulation. For many, it was a year of preparation. And uh, I remember in December, God was speaking to me regarding this year that He will remove the old wine skins and will give us a new wine skin. So whatever God is want to pour out, we will be able to receive. I mean, Lynchen, Pastor Lynchen, good morning there in Bonnie Vale. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. Hallelujah. Good morning, uh, Bobby. Pastor Bobby. Good morning. Good morning. So, yeah, uh, we've, 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 you know, we are now the last month. And I believe also, you know, with everything, there's a test when you, when you go through a school year, at the end, there's always a test. Maybe many of you, the last couple of weeks, we're writing a test, and uh, you will only know if you have passed or not. Uh, but God is all about preparation, all about bringing us an understanding of His glory and His plan and His purpose for your life. You know, I just wish many times we will less fight the situations we, we see and we experience and just understand you know, that he who is within me is greater than, than the enemy. So rather than focus on the enemy, focus on overcoming the enemy and make it a habit to overcome, but get into your destiny. Amen. You know, good morning. Uh, Lydia, good Pastor Saki, good Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. So I know this morning my theme will sound a bit strange, but I want to connect it with the word of, you know, God is preparing us, you know, taking rid of the old wineskins, <coughs> excuse me, and give us some new wineskins for the outpour, for the things you want to, to place in, in your heart and in my heart and your spirit and my spirit, excuse me. Hallelujah. So let's pray and we start this morning. Amen. I'm excited for what God is about. <coughs> Sorry for that. I'm excited for what God is about to do. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning that every day has got meaning. Every day has got purpose. It's not just a life of struggle. It's not just a life of existence. It's not a life of if or should have. It's a life we live now. It's a life of opportunity now. We have all now the choice to rise up whatever the enemy has brought us, whatever area he's brought us low. It's now a time to make a choice to do something for the kingdom of God. 
We can either just stagnate, Lord, or we can move. We can, we can say we cannot, or we can say with God, nothing is impossible. And therefore, Father, I pray for everyone. <coughs> I just pray that the word of God will touch their hearts today. Lord, bring us revelation, Holy Spirit. May your glory come upon us as we will enter into December month, the last month. We still we have time to fulfill the promises and what we've set out on the 1st of January. I pray that December will be a month of success, a month where we will get the results and say, but with God, all things are possible. That we can say, truly, we have passed the test. Truly, it's time for promotion, time for going through, time to get into a new season for what God has called us for. Therefore, Father, I pray that we will discern, but that we will hold our faith, Lord, and, 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 and that we will know and understand what is your plan and purpose. I just pray God bless everyone. Holy Spirit, touch them right now. Strengthen them that is busy with examination. Even sometimes in examination, Lord, we cannot ask questions. We just have to go through it. What we've learned, we have to put down. At the end, we will know if we failed or passed. And I just pray God strengthen everyone that's still in that exam, still busy writing a thing. But I want to tell them, you know, soon your exam will be over. Soon God will give you a breakthrough. Soon you will be promoted. I just pray that in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Jonathan, uh, so much young then. Jakarta, Amanda, Guiamora, good morning, good morning. Uh, Pastor Tolly, good morning uh, to everyone. I don't know if I've not yet greeted you. I just want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this morning my topic is like for many people a question. What, what does the Spirit of God wants to tell us this morning? And my theme for this morning is, my belly is as wine which has no vent. My belly is as wine which has no vent. And I, and I want to bring you in context what we've said in December. Cecily, Salamat Siang, then Jakarta. May God bless you, Cecily. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, so, my belly is as wine which has no vent. So, let's go and understand what the scripture says. Just understand, you know, what is meant in the context. And to bring it, you know, we all read the scripture and I will go come to that of, you know, we have to get rid of the old wine skins and get new wine skins. So, the new wine you pour in new wine skins. But I just want to bring, uh, if I can say, a bit of more perspective around that because usually we just now you know get rid of the old wine skin get a new one but what is the story about but also today how this connect with the wine skin in what i'm going to read if he says my belly is as wine which has no vent what does it mean let's go into the book of job chapter 32 verse 15 i will read a couple of scriptures and i want to bring you all of my ma i want to bring you into the story i mean job Went through all of these things. He lost everything. Susan, uh, Salamat Siang. <laughs> good, good morning there also in South Africa. So Job 30, Job 32, 15. So before I get to the scripture, just get you into the story. So Job lost everything in, in one day. It's like you going through a storm in your life. And there's always people with good intentions to help you to understand. Many of them are focused to the natural and the reasoning why you are going through it is not necessarily a spiritual revelation, but it's more an understanding out of what they came through. It's the same with Job. He had three friends. Now, up to uh, chapter 32, you know, only the, the, two, the first two friends spoke to Job. They had their opinions. They had their stories. But Elihu was sitting and watching this whole scenario. He was just there. We can say the one that is wise. But the question is, was he really wise? So Elihu, who was listening to all of this, and, and he become agitated. Listening, if I can say, he listened to the nonsense the other two friends 
you know, talk. He, his perspective was that whatever they said was a lot of rubbish. And as they speak, he become agitated. But yet he was waiting, waiting for his chance. Now, in some sense, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, in the waiting period, there's something happening with the wine inside of you, the anointing, something inside of you that can be positive or negative. In his case, he become agitated. And that's what it says. My belly is as wine which has no vein. There was no outlet of what was happening. So he was waiting. And in chapter 32, he's like, okay, okay, guys, it's my turn. Now, I want to bring it in context what I believe God was saying about 2022. Through the things, there will be people speaking into our lives. And some of us will, will have that, let's call it revelation, and, and God used them. And other people are still stagnated in their condition. And there are still people trying to figure out why are you going through this. Now I'm going to Elihu. Let's read in Job chapter 32 verse 15. So understand, he was, you know, a bit agitated. So he says, they are dismayed. They answer no more. They have not a word to say. It means the two friends talk, 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 talk. Nothing happened. Talk, talk, talk. Nothing happened. And he said, well, they are dismayed. And he says, and shall I wait because they do not speak, because they stand there and answer no more? You know, sometimes in our life we come to a conclusion or a situation, you know, there's just no more nothing to say. You know, especially when a brother or sister is going through a difficult time, we all have opinions. Some of them, like I've said, spiritual. Aggie, goeie more, good morning. Some of them have spiritual revelation. Some of them have just an opinion. But yet nothing has changed. So Elihu is between this thing, should he now say something? And verse 17, he says, I also will answer with my share. And I also will declare with my opinion. Now understand, Elihu listened and he became agitated about their visions, about their perceptions, about Job's condition. How many times we get agitated when we hear people speak into people's lives because we have a different opinion. Sometimes we think we just have a better opinion, but what's happening, there's something cooking up in your belly that has not yet been released, you know, um, and, 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 and Elihu says, and I shall I wait because I do not speak because I stand here and answer no more. I will answer with my share. I will declare with my opinion. Now listen to what he says, verse 18, for I am full of words. The spirit within me constrains me. So he says, listen, you know, the spirit, I, I really want to say a lot, but the spirit contra, uh, contra, constrains me. Verse 19, behold, now he given a description of what's going on in a natural way. He says, my belly is like wine that has no vent. It's like he wanted to see, but what was building on the inside is about to come out. It's building and building. He was waiting. In some sense, he felt that he was constrained by the Spirit. And sometimes we so think, Pastor Bertha, we are more a good morning. So sometimes many people think by waiting, they have a lot of wisdom. But in their waiting, there's something building up inside of them. You know, like they have the answer. They have the breakthrough. And here he says, my belly is like wine that has no vent. Like new wineskins ready to burst. Now, when I read that and I was looking at, you know, the scripture I will come in Matthew chapter 9, 17 about new and old wineskins. It says here, you know, there was fermentation taking place in his belly by his waiting and observing his friends talk, you know, speaking to Job. And he said, my belly is like wine that is no vein. There was no outlet. I didn't speak anything, you know, like new wineskins ready to burst. And then he says, I must speak that I may find relief. 
I must open my lips and answer. Now, we all know the end of the story at the end. None of Job's friends, actually, according to what God, you know, none of them actually added really truly to Job's life. They all had their opinions. But one of them, Elihu, was, was agitated. He was fermented. But yet he kept quiet until the moment he opened his mouth, you know, it's when he found relief. But uh, let's go to this scripture and, 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 and you know, look at it in context. So he says, behold, my belly is as wine which has no bend. So the process of fermentation properly takes place in the vat before you put it in a wineskin, from which the gas evolved in the operation that can freely escape. When wine was put into the skins before fermentation was complete and gas continued to be evolved, the effect was that the skins become distended as the gas had no vent, and then not unfrequently the skins would burst, especially if they were old ones. Prophetically, what I've, what I've experienced through all of this, yes, there's a time to be quiet and a time to say something. But many people keep quiet because of, you know, in the quietness there's fermentation taking place, an agitation, a frustration, and the more they keep it inside, the more they think they have the answer. But what's happening actually, they are putting their wine skin under pressure and it can burst. Even they receive new wine, but the new wine that's fermented can, can actually be lost when the wine skin is broken. I want to go on. So I say it is ready to burst like new skins. Even if the skins were new, they would undergo distension and would appear, you know, as if ready to burst. Though the actual catastrophe may be avoided, Elihu spent up, he spent up feelings seem to him if they, do, if they do not obtain a vent to threaten some, you know, with some uh, result. He says, I will speak that I may be refreshed. Rather that I may obtain relief, or according to some, that I may be able to breathe. I mean, Elihu feels most suffocated by conflicting feelings of rage, disappointment, and anxiety to vindicate God's honor. So, if you look at what Elihu says, the most thing that made him to rage, he wanted to fight the honor of God. By listening to these people, these other two friends, it's like they did not respect God. They blamed God for Job and they blamed Job for, for, you know, for this whole calamity. And he was listening. And when I, and I read it, I just thought, we have so many people within the body of Christ that, you know, they are truly filled with rage. They're so looking at other people within the body. And you know, they, they have their opinions and they, they keep quiet. They look at the disappointments and they want to vindicate God's honor. And many times when they do open their mouth because of the fermentation of all these things that are happening, you know, they think they honor God by vindicating God, but they still misses what actually, you know, was the intention. So they say, I will open my lips and answer. In the remainder of Elihu's discourse, the attempt is made to answer Job, which was success will be considered. You know, he thought if, if he can stand in for God, for Job, you know, this is the answer. But I want to get back to, to our story. So wineskins or the bottles that's like new wine that you put in, the new bottles are not apt to burst as old ones, meaning the new wine skins that they use is more flexible. It can take more, and especially when they have new wine in them. So also the new wine and the things that happen is a combination that keep the wine within the wine skin. Because, you know, it was so important to, to protect both. You cannot lose one or the other. The main thing is to receive 
and to keep intact both of those things, the skin and the wine. And I, and I, and I want you to, to come into a picture. How many of us have received in this year new wine? And how many of us kept certain things that we struggled with? Kept it up bottling on the inside. Kept it up that it's fermented. And how many of us actually, when we open our mouth, actually did not got relief, but rather the wineskin burst. And it's like you felt, listen, something has happened within my spirit. I've got being, you know, there's a more further relationship with God. And how many people in the fermentation trying to, you know, keep it and they open their mouths and even they speak out of frustration and they relieve something. But yet, the wine did not have the taste it was supposed to be. Because the one hearing what was said actually tastes a bitter wine. Because something happened with the wine inside the wine skin. Amen. So let's read in Matthew chapter 9, 17. And I will just explain a bit more. And, and he would pour fresh new wine into an old wine skin. Eventually the wine will ferment and make the wine skin burst. Losing everything. So we will look at what, what is the things in our lives that can make the wineskin to burst. What is this fermentation that happens that we allow by not speaking out, but we keep it all on the inside, make the wineskin to burst. It says the wine is spilled and the wineskin ruined. Two things happen. The wineskin is is. Is the wine is spilled and the wine skin is ruined. Instead, new wine is always poured into a new wine skin so that both are preserved. So what is the story here? God wants both to be preserved, not just the one. It's not just about the wine. It's about the wine skin also. It's not just about your word of revelation, the new wine. It's also about you bringing the word as a new wine that can anoint or can be tasted by people. It's not the one or the other. God wants to preserve both. When God pours new wine into you, He will prepare you. But in the fermentation, you know, if, if, you, if you do not, in, in, jo, in Elu's case in Job 32, He says, I kept quiet. I didn't speak. And how many times we look at people and actually we fill with so many judgments. We feel that maybe we have a better thing to say. But what happened? The fermentation is taking place. But what you don't know, you are putting online the new wine, the new revelation God has given you. But also you put yourself that the wine skin can be broken. And God wants to preserve both because it's the combination with you and what God through the Spirit is given you. When it's being spoken, that it create life. Amen. It says, Neither do men put new wine in old wineskins. You know, and, and it says, By his belly, he means his mind was full of matter. Can you understand? So what is the one thing that makes the fermentation is when your mind is filled with a lot of matter, and that matter he compares to the new wine wineskins. Tightly stopped, which need, which need vent and are in danger of bursting. The doctrine of the doctrine of the gospel is like the wine. So what do we see? The matter, you know, the matter um, is basically the mind full of the knowledge of the revelation is the matter. And the doctrine of the gospel is the new wine. And the wine neat and clean being free from all human mixtures. The wine of a good flavor and pleasant taste as the gospel is to those who taste, you know, taste it is changed. The generous wine which revives and refresh and comforts all which affects the doctrines of the gospel have, uh, have when attended with the divine influence. In short, it means the following. God has poured out new wine in you with the expectation that in the fermenting process, it will still be a good mixture, you know, of, 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 of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. It will not be a compromise. It will be a wine that when you open your mouth and speak, 
and people taste that wine, they will be refreshed. They will be revived. But now the question is, Elihu, you know, said, you know, that I had no vein. He never allowed the new wine. Even he says, you know, uh, the spirit, con you know, uh, actually constrains him. Meaning, it's actually said, didn't allow me to speak. But yet what happened, the matter becomes more. And the, the thing, the process of fermentation create a situation where the wineskin can burst. And what God has given you can be lost. What God has given you, that revelation, can also be lost. But also you can feel that I have failed because something happened to the wineskin. Amen. I said it may be compared to new wine, not that it is new and upstart the doctrine. It's the everlasting gospel made known immediately, you know, after the fall of, of Adam, you know, and was ordained before the world of our glory. But because it is newly or late under the gospel dispensation. So what do I say? Ministers of the word are like these vessels into which is put they are but vessels, even earthly vessels, and have nothing but what is put into them, and they are like vessels, you know, stopped up. And when they are straightened in themselves, or shut up by the Lord, they cannot come forth freely in their ministry. Sometimes God will constrain you. Amen. I say here, uh, um, so the stress, you know, if you look at, you know, the, the skins can burst. It means that a stress is on the burst. It meaning there's something that can happen negative. The thought is therefore not yet of the, of the skins, but of the fate of the wine. And the wine run out, is spilled, and the bottle or the skins perish. It ruins the vessel in which it's placed. And, but they put new wine into new, fresh wine skins. And both are preserved. So I want to tell you, in the beginning of this year, December, God was speaking about new wine schemes and preparation. And we went through this 11 months. And, and how many times maybe God give us a fresh revelation? How many times we actually felt we constrained? Some people got puffed up by the revelation they have, and there was no vent. They never spoke about truly and give God the glory, you know, the honor and glory. And how many people got the revelation, but still they choose about their opinion, their perceptions. And in the fermentation process, what happened is how many people, you know, not just the wine got lost. But also the vessel got injured. The wine skin actually ripped open. How many people had an expectation in January? And now if you talk to them from what happened, my brother or sister, you can see the wine skin has burst. You can see there's no fresh wine. It's like something happened along the way. And I just want to give you an indication what could go wrong. You know, there's a time where we should speak. And a time where we should have wisdom. And many of us do not understand the persecutions, the things we are going through. And, and, and that adds basically to the matter of the wineskin. That adds to the things. And I just want to, before I finish, I want to bring it in context with a scripture of understanding. You know, uh, just to understand what I'm saying. This, You know, our bellies are filled with wine. And in the fermentation, you know, there's no, there's no vent, there's no outlet. Maybe because of things you are going through. Maybe because of the things you are going through, you choose to be quiet like Eli, waiting, waiting, waiting. And the moment you open your mouth, it's more a burst than words that revive. It's more than, you know, that wine skin just burst and everything is lost. Suddenly you find yourself what was actually supposed to be blessed exploded within your face. I want to just, what can the fermentation process go wrong that bring us to the place where we feel we spill the wine? Now let's go to the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 2 to 5. He says, through him Jesus also we have our access, entrance, introduction, by faith, our faith, into His grace. 
the state of God's favor in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. What it says, this scripture just says everything. Your faith in Jesus brings you into the state of God's favor in which you will firmly stand and that you can rejoice in your hope and you will experience and enjoy the glory of God. But it's like God says, I will pour out new wine in, your, in you. I've prepared your wineskin. Now verse 3 speaks about actually the preparation of the wineskin. Now what it says, now, think about verse 3 and 4 about the preparation of the wineskin before the new wine will be poured in. It says, moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings. So what it says, through your sufferings and through the things you are going through is a preparation of the wineskin to receive the fresh wine. Knowing that pressure and affliction and hardship produce patience and unswerving endurance. You see, patience for the right thing, not patience out of agitation. And endurance develops maturity of character, approved faith and tried integrity. And the character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Such hope never disappoints or deludes. Or shames us, for God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given unto us. It speaks about a process of a wineskin being prepared for the fullness of God to be poured out of that wineskin. But yes, fermentation will take place. Amen. I say, knowing this, that tribulation work patience. Patience is grace. In which God is the author. It is one of the fruits of the Spirit. The Word of God is the means of being first implanted. And afflictions are the means of promoting it when they are sanctified. Otherwise, otherwise they produce impatience, murmuring and ripening. What does it say? If the wineskin is not allowing the things that God brings to renew the skin... You know, it will stay an old skin. And what is this otherwise will it produce? Impatience, murmurings. Uh, you know, there's a great need of patience, you know, that we need to have. Not the wrong type of patience. Amen. I say, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulations work patience and patience experience and experience hope. And now make not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Ghost which is given to us. And then the peace, the joy and the hope that come, that come of faith might supposed unable to stand against the facts of this present life. In which to those first believers only peculiar tribulations might seem to follow them from their faith. Amen. So what am I saying this morning? What you are going through is preparation. What, you know, building that patience and, and, and your faith and so that you can receive. But how many of us never allowed it? How many of us just want the new wine without chains? And you know what happened? Still, you know, there's an importation. But the problem is, if you have an old wineskin, you cannot contain. If there's not a change coming to Christ and allow Christ to change me and bring about the new wineskin, whatever is being poured out, I will not be able to, to hold it. And then even, maybe you've allowed it. Maybe you allowed to a point that your wineskin was being changed. And you do receive a new wine. Now the thing is, if we do not allow, if we did not allow patience to grow, if we did not allow through the hardship that a wineskin was formed, if we will not be able to handle when the fermentation happened. Fermentation is actually the combination of what we experience in the spirit and as well as in the natural. And then it's a question of open your mouth. The moment you receive the new wine and you've changed, whatever you then speak will produce life, will produce pure wine, will produce 
And the thing is, then you will see a change. Then you will see the glory of God being manifest. Amen. So the idea is that tribulation, test and endurance under them proves. So tribulation tests the quality of the skin and endurance then proves the genuineness of our faith. Amen. So I want to conclude this morning. My belly is as wine which has no vent. Maybe you've not, you fermented, but there's something negative building up. I'm telling you, it's time to open and speak. Get rid of that. So before the wine bursts and the wine is lost, that wine skin. And I just like to pray for you. There's one month left. Rise up. Doesn't matter what happened, but prepare yourself for 2023. There's yet time to pass the exam. Yes, there's still time to go through. But I'm telling you today, let God raise you up. Let God, whatever you went through, maybe God was preparing that wine scheme. And maybe some already been complete. But yet the character was not developed yet. And that's why, like Eliud, they become agitated. They become, you know, their point of view is more important, where it's all about God and the Spirit of God. I would like to pray for you today. Father, I thank you. There's how many wisdom we need just to live as Christians, Lord. Sometimes it's so easy, Lord, prepare me. I'm ready to receive. I'm ready to receive. And sometimes we do receive even when we're not ready. Just to spill the new wine. Maybe there are people today that felt this year they spilled the new wine. And maybe there are people that feel, they just feel, Lord, that their wine sack bursts. Because they allow their minds to be changed by their conditions, by their situations. And because they didn't clear the word of God, they, in the fermenting process, they rather choose to stress and have anxiety than to speak the, the word of God and allow the new wine to just produce. They spoke the wrong stuff. Lord, I just pray that you will help us. This year is not yet past. We still have 31 days. We still have one month. May this month bring us in line for the position, the calling, and the plans you have for us for 2023. And wherever we failed, Lord, I pray forgive us. I pray, Father, for restoration. I pray wherever we spill the new wine, Lord, just pour out a fresh anointing. So that we can rise up. We can be prepared. Knowing how to fight the fight. Elihu. In his own wisdom. Thought by sitting back and watching. This is the way to go. But yet we read that also he. Was wrong. He thought by protecting the honor of God. Is the way he acted. But actually he missed it. How many times, Father, we wise in our own eyes and we only believe what we see and we're not open to learn and to understand what the Spirit of God is teaching us. I just pray, God, please forgive us. But I pray, God, there's still time in this year. I pray for doors to open. I pray, Lord, that even now that new wineskins will form, that new wine will be poured out. That we will experience a revival in December. That we will experience a rising up, stepping into. But also that we will speak forth the word of God. Speaking the love and the fullness and the glory of God. Speaking, Lord, that people will be set free. I just honor you today. Father, I glorify you. I thank you for your perfect love. Touch us right now, Lord. As we step into the new month tomorrow with an expectation, with a boldness, without fear, claiming and say, God, pour out that new wine. Many of us being being prepared over the year. The wine skin is being prepared. Let then this month be the one, the month of receiving and outpour a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. That new wine 
that we can enter into father in 2023 and speak forth and we will see the glory of god i just pray and say lord touch everyone bring them into your glory and father thank you for being glorified in jesus christ name amen hallelujah Praise God. Fala goeie more. Lapis goeie more. Goeie more. If I've not yet greeted you. May God bless you. Tomorrow you step into the last month of this year. The first of December. Don't just step in. Have a plan. Have a purpose. Let God fill you. Let God fill you with a new wine. Let God fill you with something that just say, listen. This is my season. This year is not over yet. I will fight the fight. I will rise up. I will stand upon the word of God. I will do. I still have time. It's not lost. God can change everything tomorrow. He can even change everything today. God can, maybe you've made some mistakes, but I'm telling you, this is the time to rise up. Rise up and fulfill what God has spoken in your spirit in the beginning of this year. Amen. So may God bless you. May God bless you. Fala, what a privilege. What a lekker om van jou te hoor. Mag die Heere jou sien, Fala. Praise die Heere. God bless you. Praying for you. May you have an amazing day. Uh, just know, I'm praying for you. Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.